Today's movie is about a woman who is given permission by her disabled husband to sleep with another man so that she can get pregnant. Grab your popcorn as we recap. Lady Chatterley is lover. Connie and Clifford Chatterley are tying the knot. They are both incandescently happy. Connie's sister Hilda is a bit apprehensive about the marriage because Clifford goes back to fight in the war tomorrow. After the party, Clifford loses his V-card. However, the next morning, they say their farewells because Clifford has a war to fight. Much, much later, Clifford's father has died. So they move into his estate. Clifford is wheelchair-bound after sustaining injuries during the war. Even with his new disability, Connie still maintains her cheerful outlook and loving personality. Not everything is rainbows though. At night when they try to do it, Clifford is unable to get his banana up. He's not even in the mood to use his fingers on his wife. The next few days, they interview maids and other people to help around the estate. One of the new hires is Oliver, a war veteran lieutenant, but now he'll be the gamekeeper, tending to breed the animals on the property. Months pass, and Clifford refuses to have anyone help him other than his wife. She also helps him with his novel pursuits. Most of the day she's bored out of her mind, and hopes to one day visit her sister Hilda back in London. One day during out on her walk, she runs into a teacher, Mrs. Flint. She finds out about the miners protesting for better work conditions. When Clifford wants to go on a walk with Connie, he gets stuck in the mud. However, Oliver runs into them and helps him out. Connie stares at Oliver as they walk away. While looking at his estate, Clifford suggests Connie sleep with another man so that she can provide him an heir to the estate. As far as anyone would know it would be his. Connie is shocked about this suggestion, especially since she loves Clifford dearly. Clifford tells her he wouldn't want Connie to fall for the man. It would simply be transactional, like a trip to the dentist. Clifford also would rather not know who the man is. Connie doesn't like this suggestion at all since she made a vow to be with Clifford. During one of Clifford's parties with other writers, an Irish man starts to make a pass at Connie. Clifford sees this and immediately gets jealous. He tells Connie the Irish man is no longer invited. The following days, Connie and Clifford grow tired of each other. Clifford feels like a failure after reading reviews on his new book. Connie doesn't feel great after their conversation about getting pregnant from another man. Luckily, Hilda comes over to care for Connie. Hilda hires Mrs. Bolton to care for Clifford so that Connie can be free to do whatever she pleases with her days. Connie is told to check on the gamekeeper to see when the pheasants will lay their eggs. When she goes there, she catches Oliver taking a shower. Connie compliments him on his lovely cottage and likes that he's a reader. Oliver tells her that the pheasants will be hatching chicks in a few weeks. They go into the backyard, and Oliver allows her to gather some flowers. Afterwards, Connie visits Mrs. Flint to give her some flowers. Mrs. Flint tells her that Oliver used to be married, but he found out his wife Bertha was sleeping around while Oliver was out fighting the war. Then, she goes home to please herself. The next day, Mrs. Bolton tells Connie about how her husband died at the mines. He was blamed for his own death and only given 300 euros as compensation. Mrs. Bolton has been a huge help around the house, and Connie has been very happy about it. During one of her walks, Connie hears a hammering across a stream. She's surprised to see Oliver there who offers her a seat inside the warm shack. While she's sitting, and he's working, they both steal glances at each other. She uses the hut every now and then to write in her journal. As months go by, she feels a bit isolated from her husband and Mrs. Bolton though. They play games and do business without her. She fills this time with watching the baby chicks hatch. She feels trapped in her own home, longing for something more. During a lunch with new business partners, Connie is spoken down to by her husband. She decides to leave and pet the new baby chicks to calm her nerves. When Oliver shows her how to, he holds Connie's hand steadily. Connie starts to have a panic attack while holding the chick and Oliver helps her out. She hugs him for his kindness. They go inside the hut so that Connie can calm down. She grabs Oliver to initiate something, and Oliver hesitantly agrees. They do the dirty deed. Afterwards, Oliver walks her back. Apparently, Clifford didn't even notice Connie was gone. The next day, Connie waits at the hut for Oliver. Once he arrives, he says he's afraid that they'll get caught and he's afraid for her reputation being ruined. Connie doesn't care though and immediately goes in for the kill. She says she doesn't have much time. During this rendezvous, Oliver focuses on Connie's needs. Afterwards, they agree to meet up at his cottage the next day. Connie gives him an undergarment to keep. At home, 
Connie starts to space out while Clifford talks about his new business venture tending to the mines. He stopped writing altogether. She writes a letter to her sister, saying her heart was once closed, and now it's opened up again. The next day, Connie visits Mrs. Flint and her baby. Connie tells her that she hopes to have a baby with Clifford someday. Then, Oliver stops by for some milk. While Mrs. Flint goes inside to grab it for him, Oliver wonders why Connie hasn't come by to the cottage. He tries to touch Connie, but she retracts away in fear of someone finding out. Connie leaves, but Oliver follows her. He tries to convince her to go to the cottage, but it's almost dark. Oliver suggests they do it in the bushes, so they do. They comment about how they both climaxed at the same time. Then afterwards, Connie realizes that Oliver has some tenderness in him, and she's only realizing now that she's been so lonely before she had met him. When she gets home, Clifford and Mrs. Bolton don't even know that she's been gone. The following months, Connie and Oliver grow even closer and do it a lot in the fields. One morning, Connie realizes her breasts feel different today. Mrs. Bolton and her strike up a conversation at night. Mrs. Bolton never remarried after her husband died because she was so happy. Connie says the same about love, but she's really referring to Oliver. Mrs. Bolton is shocked to hear that Connie may still be able to get pregnant with Clifford. During laundry day, the maids talk about how ever since Clifford took over the mines, the men have been working hotter. Then, Mrs. Bolton tells them that Lady Chatterley may still get pregnant someday. Clifford has heard of the rumors and hopes that means Connie has taken him up for his offer. Connie suggests she visit her sister at Venice soon, so that she may in fact sleep with a man. Clifford agrees to this, but no one must find out and he doesn't want to know who the man is. Later, Connie tells Oliver about her trip. She comes clean about expecting a child and that Clifford will be okay with it. Oliver is shocked and feels used. He thinks Connie was just using him for a child. But Connie says she never planned any of this. Afterwards, Clifford talks about his new machinery and the workers in the mines. Connie says Clifford talks about the workers like they are just a herd of animals. Clifford's little tricycle ends up having issues. Oliver goes to help push him. Connie does as well and steals a kiss. However, Oliver retracts and walks away. Connie is at a boiling point. She gets angry at Clifford for his treatment towards the mine workers only paying them two pounds a week. She hates him for his views on the ruling class. Later, Connie goes to Oliver to apologize. She only wants him and will eventually divorce Clifford. Oliver says he still has to divorce his current wife as well. His wife, Bertha comes by with her current man Ned, and they bully Oliver into giving them his war pension, which is why Bertha refuses to divorce Oliver. Oliver comments about how he hates the current world they live in, where men take advantage of other men in pursuit of money. Then, the two go running naked in the rain in pure pure bliss. Later, Mrs. Bolton is told to fetch Corny because she's been gone for hours. Mrs. Botlon catches Corny with Oliver, Luckily they were clothed. Connie is upset that Clifford had asked a servant to come fetch her. She gets really sassy with her husband when she arrives. Soon, Hilda has arrived. Hilda is happy that Connie has met someone. However, her mood shifts when Connie tells her it's Oliver the gamekeeper. Hilda tells Connie that she's confusing hormone time with love again. When Hilda goes to meet Oliver, she does not approve. She talks about the class system and Connie being ostracized by her peers for being with a servant. Hilda says it like it is and wonders how Oliver would even support Corny once Oliver loses his job. She adds, if Oliver actually loved Corny, he'd let her go. Hilda storms out. Oliver realizes the truth now. Clifford will fight tooth and nail to keep the child. Afterwards, they do it some more. The next morning, his wife's boyfriend Ned pays him a visit. So Corny hides in the bedsheets. Corny eventually has to leave him for her trip to Venice. She had forgotten her undergarments at Oliver's cottage. So Oliver decides to burn them to make sure no one finds out about the affair. When Hilda picks Connie up, Mrs. Flint notices Connie was coming from Oliver's cottage. Later, Connie's father Sir Malcolm Reed gets the lowdown on Connie's affair. Malcolm says Connie will have very little to gain from leaving Clifford. He advises her to keep a lover, but stay with Clifford. Meanwhile, Ned goes to Clifford's hut. He finds Connie's burnt endogomments in the fireplace. He even finds Connie's book. Afterwards, Ned goes to a bar to tell everyone what he found. The news spreads like wildfire, eventually reaching Clifford. He's advised to fire the gamekeeper, to lay the rumors to rest. Mrs. Bolton decides to call Lady Chatterley about what's going on. Corny is heading back now. Mrs. Bolton tells Oliver all of this, to warn him about what's to come. When Clifford talks to Oliver about this, 
He reminds Oliver that he's just a servant. He fires Oliver and gives him only a day to pack his things then leave. When Connie finally arrives, Mrs. Flint doesn't want anything to do with Connie. Connie's reputation has been officially ruined. Eventually, Connie meets up with Oliver at the hut. Oliver says he has nothing to give her. No home, no money and no life. Oliver is escorted out of the property and they make a pact to meet up again when the time is right. However, they didn't have cell phones back then, so he promises to find her somehow. When Connie confronts Clifford about this, they are both furious. Connie says it was Clifford's idea after all. She says she wants a divorce and is leaving Clifford because she's been unhappy. Clifford says he's been very happy. Connie rebuts that she never received any sort of affection from Clifford. She had followed all of his rules. Like a simp, Clifford begs her to stay. Then, he says he won't grant her a divorce. When Connie leaves, Mrs. Bolton tells Connie that she hopes she finds Oliver someday. Later, the maids start gossiping about Lady Chatterley. Mrs. Bolton defends her by saying Connie gave up everything to be with Oliver. It's a true love story and she won't hear any of the girls drag Connie's name in the mud. Much later, Hilda tells Connie that Oliver has finally found her. She gives her his letters. Apparently, he's living in a small farm in Scotland. She packs up her things, and the two are finally reunited to have their child together.